everyone, it's Maki here. Are you enjoying the movie Gundam Seed Freedom? Recently, director Mitsuo Fukuto attended the screening in Thailand. It was impressive to see Thai fans holding plastic models and watching the movie in costume. You can really tell how much they've been looking forward to this work. This episode contains spoilers for the movie. If you want to watch the movie without prior information, I recommend watching this program after watching the movie. Today, we are going to look at the fighting techniques of Kiyo Yamato Shur and Ofi. The movie introduced many elements that have appeared in the Seed series in the past. You must have felt the accumulation of the past series in the movie. However, the fighting scenes are very fast and there are many elements that can be missed with just one viewing. In fact, Kira uses the fighting techniques of an unexpected person in one scene. Let's watch such elements. Now let Sodi show me your value. The target is the Strike Freedom Gunnam type 2. Please press the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell button to attack with the large dragoon's reward. Let's show who's worthy of Lars. Strike Freedom is attacked by Shiva and Kala of the Black Knight Squad. Shiva launches a continuous attack, simultaneously swinging the beam sabering his arm, the heat call, and the beam swording his leg. Pay attention to the scene, where he exaggerates the movement of the call. The audience's eyes are drawn to the call, which opens and crosses like a crop's call. However, as soon as he starts moving the call, shift your attention to the bottom right of the screen. You notice that he is swinging the beam sword in his leg. If you had focused only on the call, you might have been defeated. Kira seems to have noticed this move. He successfully blocks Shiva's attack. Next, he raises the beam savoring his right arm and the beam sword in his right leg. It's a similar move to the attack on the left side. However, this attack also includes a twisting of the body and an additional attack with the beam mantle. Shiva launches a series of bellied attacks. The scene changes to show the battle from a distance. As Shiva spins, Strike Freedom's beam rifle is destroyed. It might be a coincidence, but it resembles the scene where the beam rifle of Providence Gunnam is destroyed by Freedom Gunnam. In the battle against Providence Gunnam, Kira attacks by using the machine's unique feature of rotating the mobile suit's wrist 360 degrees. Kira is on the defensive against Shiva's attacks. He is unable to attack. Immediately after destroying the beam rifle, focus on Strike Freedom's waist. As a result of his Type 2 conversion, Strike Freedom has added a mechanism that allows him to deploy and fire railguns while equipped with weapons such as the beam rifle on his hip. This mechanism is also used in the movie. Kiro fires the railgun at the ground. The next moment, an explosion and debris act as a smoke screen, allowing him to gain distance from Shiver. Does this look familiar? As a matter of fact, there is one person in the Seed series TV Ami who practiced this method of fighting against Kiro. That person is Marco Moasim. Moarim's man tried to fire torpedoes and fallen laser cannons at the strike on them. However, Moasim fired torpedoes at the bottom of the sea using the explosion rock debris and ocean currents to disorient strike on them. In the movie, the tactics of past characters were used. The tactics of Toda Konato and Nico helped Kira on his team. Did you notice that Marco Moasim's tactics helped Kira? 
If you have a chance to watch the movie again, pay attention to it. Please do not miss Shiva's fighting style with fights. It's a very short and fast scene. Let's take a look at the next scene. Rock Knight squads Kara and Strike Freedom Dragoon are used at the same time. The scene where the dragoons shoot at each other reminds me of Shao's counterattack. At first glance, the battle between the dragoons seems even. However, there is a scene where Strike Freedom's dragoon is overwhelmed by the speed of Kara's dragoon. There is a scene where Kara's dragoon uses a beam saber and destroys Strike Freedom's dragoon. Kara's dragoon emits a red light. Though not yet revealed, it may be using the propulsion device similar to the Voltier Lumiere. Kira returns Strike Freedom's Dragoon to its main body. It may have been determined that they would be at a disadvantage in battles between Dragoons. Kira equips a railgun type weapon in his left hand. In the next scene, he crosses both arms to perform an attack. It's the same attack Kira used in Sea Destiny. This attack destroys one of Kara's dragoons. The attack is performed with the railgun. This is a scene where the railgun, equipped to destroy Femto armor, demonstrates its power. He also attacks Shiva with the beam rifle in his right arm, blocking the approach. Because several elements are shown in one instant, it's a scene that's very easy to miss. I couldn't notice it on a single viewing. Though Strike Freedom has prevented Shiva's approach, in the next moment he receives a simultaneous attack from Kala and Shiva. Strike Freedom crashes into the lunar surface. However, this is not a crash, but a defensive action. Kira uses the Dragoon system again. By flying near the lunar surface, he limits the direction of enemy attacks to only from above. This method of combat is the same as Hathaway's in Hathaway's Crash. Hathaway flew close to the ocean surface to cause Penelope's funnel missiles to collide with the ocean surface and destroy them. He made attacks that consumed the enemy's ammunition while making evasive maneuvers. What about Kiro's case? Unlike Hathaway's situation, there are two enemies. In addition, there are attacks from a distance with large Dragoon Ziggurat. Defending with a barrier using the Dragoon system is all he can do. Kira is pretty much cornered in this scene. Let's watch the scene right after Strike Freedom performs a full burst attack. It's when Ophi starts his attack while yelling don't mess with me. Ophi quickly understands the characteristics of the Dragoon Barrier Kira is using. First, he hits the barrier with rockets to cause an explosion. Smoke is generated, reducing Kira's visibility. He then targets and destroys Strike Freedom's Dragoon with a beam. At this point, the beam used by Kala voltage like a beam saver to destroy the Dragoon. It's a beam similar to the guillotine burst used by Rezo in Gundam Unicorn. It's a method of swinging the beam around while irradiating it for a long time, not a short time. It's an attack that was impossible for Providence Gundam or Legend Gundam. Irradiating a beam cannon for a long time means consuming a lot of energy. It represents a huge technological advancement. With the loss of its entire Dragoon system, Strike Freedom is backed even further into a corner. The side of it desperately defending itself against missiles as it retreats is reminiscent of Penelope. Here, Kira uses the head-mounted Balkan cannons, a weapon never used in Sea Destiny. It's a very low-key scene, but I was very pleased with it. 
It's a fierce battle that requires Kiro to use every weapon at his disposal. In the scene where Strike Freedom uses the Vulcan guns, note the laser pointer on the head of Black Knight Squad's color hitting Strike Freedom. With many of its weapons lost and forced into a state of pure defense, Strike Freedom's trajectory becomes linear. The laser lock-on is successful. Black Knight Squad's laser lock-on takes a certain amount of time. This is shown in the scene where the Archangel is destroyed. Because the lock-on took time, Mao Ramius was able to escape Black Knight Squad lure. Once Carlos successfully locks on, she hits Strike Freedom's back with a missile. She then executes a sword attack on the unbalanced Strike Freedom. Kira blocks this attack, but the beam rifle in his right arm is destroyed. Shiva then launches a sword attack. Against Shiva, Strike Freedom fires his railgun. It's a small detail. But at this point, the sound of the railgun firing changes to that of a beam rifle. This must be a production error. Presumably, this will be corrected when the film hits Blu-ray discs or similar media. While trying to intercept Shiva's attack, Strike Freedom is also threatened by Carlos' dragoon attack. And then Strike Freedom's abdominal beam cannon is also destroyed by Shiva's attack. After Destiny Gundam and Impulse Gundam finish their love scene with the Deuterium Beam, the battle continues Shiva's attack, destroys the railgun on the right side of the waist. Shiva seems to have chosen a fighting style that steadily destroys weapons without underestimating the enemy. Kara's belly beam cannon is defended by a beam shield but the blast from a rocket hits Strike Freedom. This is also more Sim's tactic. Perhaps Sophie has learned the tactic Strike Freedom used against Shiva earlier. More Sim's tactics were passed on to Kira and then to Ophi. Blown away by the explosion, Strike Freedom ends up in phase shift down. If Athra nor Lars hadn't appeared to save Kira at this point, the story of Seed Freedom might have ended here. So now, Zaft's powerful underwater mobile suit and its powerful pilot, Mark Moasim, their spirits greatly influenced the outcome of the decisive battles in Seed Freedom. Thank you for watching to the end. Please remember the King of the Sea, Zono from time to time. Let's meet again in the next program.